welcome back to Rachel's studio and in today's video I'm going to share some of the techniques that I used to paint this picture of Parker in a loose gestural style and I'm going to really emphasize a lot of the techniques I use that I've mentioned in my hack videos so there will be a lot of real world application of my hacks just to prove to you that I really do use these hacks. Sorry I didn't mean to point my finger at you. <laughs> this video will be chock full of ideas and techniques and new discoveries that I've made recently. And be sure not to miss the bloopers at the end. But let's get going with this wonderful painting of Parker. And how could it not be wonderful? It's a Parker. <laughs> not biased. All right, I am putting some core cadmium yellow light on my palette and I'm using core manganese and core cadmium red light. Here you see me using one of my hacks. Remember when I used the white gel liner in my last hack video? I'm putting in little details along the edges of his face and other little details I want to keep white. And here I'm mixing all my colors together to see how they mix together and I discovered through this little experiment that manganese blue and red make gray, not purple. Not even close to purple. So would I recommend that you use these colors for this painting? No, I would not. I would recommend that you use perhaps a cobalt blue, a M. Graham naphthol red, and a Holbein aureolin. So I haven't tried cadmiums in a long time, so I decided to try them with my students. And this painting taught me that they're too granulating for skin tones, in my opinion, but I will show you later in this video how I fixed that. All right, here you can see what I did was I wet his whole face with clear, clean water and got it glistening, not puddling, but just glistening. And then I charge the paint right into the pool of clear water. And I was careful to keep my clear water off of the areas that I want to keep white, like the edges of his face and the highlight on his nose. So you can see by where the paint kind of spreads out where my clear water was and where it was not. And I'm using a mix of only the red and yellow. And by the way, notice that I'm using a limited palette. You do not need more than three colors for most paintings. And I will use a little bit of black later, but not much. And here I'm just dro dropping in some almost pure cadmium red and watch what it does as it dries. This is why cadmium red I don't think is great for skin. It gets too chalky and it will granulate kind of which means it looks kind of like it takes on a sandy appearance and M. Graham Napfall red will not do that. Also the red on his nose I think was a little too bold but with the techniques that I like to use, which is using a scrubber to soften things, it's so easy to fix, especially if you're using good paper. You cannot use a scrubber on cheap paper. You have to use watercolor, 100% cotton paper, uh, but also you can't get these blending effects that I'm using unless you use good watercolor paper. And I am testing out different papers as well because I've fallen out of love with my Arsh cold press paper, which since it was bought by a larger company, the quality has gone down and there's been sizing issues and a lot of people are talking about it on watercolor forums I'm a member of. And I'm using Fabriano Artistico 100% cotton paper. And I really love how the paint sits on top of this paper and it's really bright and colorful. And here I'm using my silver black velvet size eight round, which I use for most of this painting, by the way. And it holds a lot of paint, so you don't have to keep reloading your brush. Now here I'm using the manganese. I'm mixing, I'm trying to get a darker uh, orange brown for the darks in his hair. And that manganese blue just does not mix well. I don't think it makes a good primary. It's too yellow. But to mix a brown like this, you only need three primaries and it's mostly um, a red and yellow in equal parts and then you add a little bit of blue and that will give you this brown color. No matter really what paint colors you're using, what three primaries. And when you're painting hair, just a little tip, you want to paint the shapes in the hair, not each individual hair. So he's got a big kind of like upside down V on his forehead of brown hair. So I was painting that shape. 
And then for the details in the eyes, especially with his eyes looking down, I just used the very tip of my brush and just kept the shape really simple and, and his eyelids instead of painting every single little eyelash and every single little detail for this loose painting. And plus this, I'm only painting in eight by 10, so there's only so much detail that you can get. Let's talk a little about why I chose a light gray background. By the way, I do have a playlist with videos about backgrounds and I'll link that here. I wanted the background to be a support to the beautiful skin tones in Parker, which are oranges. Let's use a little color theory to figure out what color our background should be for this painting. All right, so here's a little color theory stuff. So these are the colors that are in skin tones. Let's look across the color wheel and see what we find. We find blues and greens. So you take blues and greens and put them in your painting and you can use pure blues and greens to really, like I did, which will really add a nice contrast and pop to this orange. And you can also add some grayed down blues and greens. Now I didn't have any grayed down greens, but I do have gray, um, bluish gray in his shirt and in his background and those colors because they are across the color wheel they're they're the opposite of orange they provide contrast they will make the oranges and the reds and the yellows in his skin look even brighter and more vibrant and fresh like you want a child to look all right let's talk about the hands real quick too hands can be hard because you have to get all the proportions and angles just right or else they look wonky or you can keep them abstracted like I did and just paint the basic shapes of them, which in this painting are kind of like triangles again. I played up the red colors in his hand to add aesthetic interest and distilled the hands into more basic triangle shapes with melting reds and oranges. After all that dried, I did go in and paint a couple lines, but not every single one to delineate a few, but not all of the fingers. This approach also helps tell the viewer's eye to enjoy the hands, but to keep moving through the painting and back around to the face. Now here, this is one of my favorite parts of the painting where I used really gestural paint strokes. I used cream consistency paint on dry paper to create the shadows under his legs. And then I went in and spritzed those, just a few little spritz, not a misting spritz, but a splatting spritz to get parts of those shadows um, loosened up by spraying them with clear water and I loved how they came out. All right, here I'm gonna show you how I fix the cadmium red cheeks with a scrubber. This is a size two stiff scrubber. I've got it wet and I'm very delicately because this is uh, Fabriano Artistico does not take as much scrubbing as my beloved Arsh Cold Press did. So I'm just dabbing and it doesn't take a lot because this is thick paint that I have on here anyway. And I wanted to soften up some of these harsh red marks. And later I'll go in and soften up his right or left cheek more where it's meeting the nose and it's too bright red. Later I go in and I will lighten that up too by just touching it a few times firmly with the scrubber and dabbing at it with a paper towel and look how much softer that looks now. So that is the beauty of watercolor. You really can fix things, especially if you use non-staining paint. That's why I do not use alizarin crimson. I do not use thallos much and you can research paints on websites like handprint.com. I also just found a new one. It gives a lot of information about lots of different brands of paints in each color. And here I'm just continuing to balance out the values in his face and glaze new layers on top of the dried paint. So I paint in a layer on his face, let it dry, see what needs to be a little darker, and then do another glaze of watery paint over that to add a little bit more depth and darkness to whatever area it is needed in the face. And you can see I'm doing the same thing with his hair. After his hair is dried, I can go in with another layer on top of that and add more details to his hair. And notice how I used the lines in the painting to help move the viewer's eye through this painting. His paintbrush goes down to the painting and then there will be a stroke on the paper that will help move the eye 
up and around, back up the other paintbrush and around to back to his face. And here I'm painting in um, loosely the details of his shirt with just uh, interpretive brush strokes, fast brush strokes, just capturing the idea of the shapes in the shirt, not painting every single fold perfectly. Be sure to join my Patreon to watch this and over 60 other full real-time tutorials that come complete with downloadable line drawings, reference photos, and supply lists, and a lot of other goodies too vast to list in their entirety here. <laughs> and just loosely painting in his little paint palette over there, keeping it really loose and interpretive, not over painting it. It's not an important part, so I don't put a lot of details. Just enough to tell the story that it's the paint palette. And once you can tell it's a paint palette, you can stop painting it. You don't have to put every single little detail in. Now, I loved how his shirt was a very childish shirt. So I wanted that to be part of the story of this painting. And again, when you're painting children, try to paint them doing something that children do, wearing clothes that children wear, because that's all part of the story and it adds interest to your painting. Here is a little riff on my hacks where I used a squeegee to paint straight lines, but here instead I'm using the side of an illustration board to create the straight line of Parker's paintbrush. I mix up a milk consistency puddle of green, then brush the paint on the side of the board, and then use the board like a stamp to create a straight paintbrush. When it's still wet, I drop in a little blue in the bottom of the brush handle to add just a little bit of interest so it's not completely flat. If you haven't checked out my hacks videos, by the way, I'll link the playlist here. Another thing that was bugging me was I felt like the line of his face was a little too straight compared to the reference photo on his right or left side. There's more of a dip into his eye that also helps make his cheek look kind of more babyish and rounded and cute in the reference that I didn't quite get. And so I'm going to show you all how I do a subtle little fix. I'm gonna turn the painting on its side so I can see that edge along the side of his face and I want to dip it in towards his eye a little bit more. I want there to be more of an indention between his cheek and his upper eyebrow area. So I'm gonna go in with T consistency. This is gonna be really subtle and I'm just going to push it in a little bit, his upper cheek up into his eye a little bit and then that's about it. It's just a subtle little change. And then I go in with clear water around that mark and blend it out with the clear um, water on a damp brush, not a dripping brush. Overall, I am very happy with this painting. I really love his mouth. I really think that came out well. I love his shirt. I love the shadow under his legs. I love how loose I kept his hands and the painting and everything else was really kept gestural and painterly and loose, and that achieved my goals for this painting. Be sure to subscribe. I upload new videos weekly. I've got another hack video coming. How's that? Oh, shoot, I forgot my mic. Oh, Lord. Ah. 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 I can never get it together. You ever feel that way? There we go. All right, oh, we're gonna try again. <laughs> okay. <laughs> hey, honey. Yes, sir. I'm making like a video right now, and the cat is doing something really cute, so I don't want to stop. Okay. Do you mind? And I'll put the groceries away as soon as I'm done. Thank you. <laughs> No, don't leave, you're being so cute. Aren't you going to leave? Don't leave. All right, thank you all so much for joining me in this tutorial, and I will see you next week when I upload my new video. Bye, everybody.